Paper mache sculpture details too. I'm ready to start decorating my sculpture. There's a lot of different materials you can use and I'm going to walk you through how to use those different materials. The first thing I'm going to do is take a marker and lay out the designs that I want on the surface. You can use all kinds of things on paper mache, cardboard, wire, found objects, tape. Here I want a P on my design. So I drew a P the right size and I'm gonna cut it out and I'll show you how to integrate it into your sculpture. Let's make a flat shape that has a little bit of dimension on it. This P is a relief sculpture. Relief is a kind of sculpture that is not freestanding. It relies on something underneath to hold it. So building this on slowly with small pieces of newspaper and then tucking the newspaper around the edges so that your relief shape will continue to pop out, overlapping to create strength. And hopefully you can see that it is sticking out. You'll do a couple layers of paper just like that and you'll get a nice hard shell. I wanna make a half sphere here. And there are a couple of ways to make the form we call sphere. One way is to crumple up newspaper and use tape to hold it together and then put a paper mache shell over it. You might have to crumple it a bit to get it to act like how you want it to act. Okay. There, that looks pretty good. Okay, a sphere is a form. So now I'm creating that form and I'm putting the tape on there so that the newspaper remembers the form I want it to take. Okay, and once again, I'm use, laying this right on top of my design so I keep the size right. I just want it to remember its form. So now I've got a half sphere. Okay, I'm gonna put it on here. All right. Now I'm going around the edges, pushing out all wrinkles. Smaller pieces of paper let you do a better job of not getting wrinkles. So if you're getting a bunch of wrinkles, you don't really want that probably unless wrinkles is part of the texture you're after. So make some really skinny strips, really thin, and those are gonna allow you to go around, around your forms without creating a bunch of wrinkles. I would coat this out at least two or three times with newspaper to give it the nice shell that I'm going to get from using that paper mache. You need to push on it a little bit because it's got some dents that you don't like. You can still continue to to manipulate this form a little bit. Anytime it looks rough, you can just rub it down a little bit, add more uh, newspaper to it, more layers, and strips would go down and lock this piece onto the surface of your letter. I'm cutting three L's and stacking them together to make a really thick L. I'm gonna tape them together and then cover them with paper mache. There we go. Now my L has a little edge. You can do it with lots of little pieces of tape or you can try and do it with a longer piece of tape. Now I'm going to paper mache that um, entirely and stick it to the surface with paper mache. Those paper mache layers, when they lock into each other, they give strength and that's why you always want to overlap them. A found object, uh, which means it's just stuff you find you can integrate objects you find in the world you can integrate into your artwork like well, an old tape roll or a bottle cap can i use that yeah i really can so i can do an an o out of this old cardboard tape center and i could also integrate a found object like a bottle cap and i can make a interesting looking O. so what i'm going to do is i'll wrap these things with paper mache first and then i'll paper mache them right onto my surface. The reason I'm paper macheing them first is uh, I'm going to make the whole surface be the same so it all feels unified. So what could you find in your world and wrap up and integrate into your project? Neatness counts so remember to just take your time because this is never a race. Craftsmanship 
is one of the things that will distinguish your artwork. I'm gonna shoot for probably three to five layers on this. I really want it held on, it needs to be strong. The smaller the, the form you're working on, the smaller your little pieces of paper need to be. I'm just tucking those little pieces of paper around the bottle cap. I'm locking that bottle cap down onto my surface. And those few layers of paper are gonna get rock hard and uh, be a really solid shell. A lot of layers, a lot of thin noodles. <laughs> so here I am locking it onto the surface of the letter going up and around and tucking it back down. You can see a number of layers of newspaper are holding them into place. I'm gonna do a cursive A and I want it really curvy and elegant. So I could do it out of the flat cardboard if I am confident in my cutting skills. Um, I could wrap up newspaper into a big old fat form and kind of twist it around. But let me show you one other option you have. Here I have some leftover ceramic clay. Now, I know that if I sculpt something out of this, I have to fire it for it to be strong, but I do have the option to create something with this clay and then coat it with many layers of paper mache. And this piece of clay will dry and the paper mache will dry it over it. As long as there's enough layers of paper encasing it, creating a shell around it, it will be strong and it will be a solid core. Now, one of the things you don't wanna do with would this. be to build a core that is very massive. For instance, if I were gonna build a huge oak tree on top of this A, uh, and that huge oak tree was solid clay, it would weigh so much that my poor little A would probably just tip right over all the time because it had this huge, heavy chunk of clay on the very top of it. So you have to be cognizant if you're going to use bits of clay as the core of some of the rounded forms you're going to make. You have to be cognizant. Don't make it tremendously heavy. Well, so what if I want to make something big, like a big tree? So if you do that, you're going to crumple up paper like you did with this sphere. This is crumpled paper coated with paper mache, and that gives you a lot of rounded mass without any weight. The advantage of the clay is it allows me to create thin or small rounded uh, details that would be really hard to do with crumpled up newspaper. All right, I have an A that I like. I'm going to rip up some very small pieces. If I don't do this and I just lay the clay here, we all know what clay does. It shrinks and it falls off. Well, I don't really want it to shrink and fall off. I want it to maintain its nice relief profile. And so I'm going to encase the whole thing in paper mache. This clay will be incredibly fragile when it dries. So it really needs a couple layers of newspaper to give it a shell, All right? You can see the newspaper is coating and coming down onto the surface and sticking these pieces of clay onto the paper mache letter. I'm gonna keep going. Anytime you have something curvy that you don't need to worry about how heavy it's gonna be, you can use this technique. If you want something curvy that's big and bulky, use the crumpled up paper technique because paper doesn't weigh much. And anytime you wanna do a relief that's not curvy, it has like lots of straight lines, cut cardboard is great. You can even build up your cut cardboard kind of thick with a few pieces. And there's always those found objects too that are fun. Here I've got my L cut out. Now I'm going to use newspaper to attach it just exactly like I did these other ones. I'm gonna put some paste on top of my L and I have paste inside of this newspaper. It's crumpled up and I'm going to just start putting these crumply pieces right on top of the letter. All right, so I've got my my letters finished and drying. Okay, there's my my L. It has that really rough texture on it that will dry kind of um, rough and rocky. And once you have all your building done, then you can think about applying paint or other finishes to your project.